Welcome to Chemistry and Cooking on edux.co. Today we are continuing with our mild reaction and we're focusing this time on collision theory and rate of reaction. Let's get right into it. The first thing that we're going to look at is going to be the reaction mechanism. Just as a reminder of the first step where the sugar molecules and amino acid react to form the first intermediate. We do have a number of different uh, structures of glucose. We can either have a ring form, which is the more um, popular form that we usually see, but it could also be a open structure, and that's the one that we're looking at today. It's the aldehyde functional group that is going to react from the glucose and then the amino acid, it is the nitrogen with the lone pair that is going to attack the carbon of the carbonyl group. So we have the sugar and the protein reacting together under heat to form a N-substituted glycosylamine. And here it is the C double bond N that is the main functional group. And we also have produced water. After this first step, we have another second step that we've looked at before when we talked about the mild reaction in steaks. Uh, but after that second step, we then have the reaction go on various different pathways, producing many different aroma substances. And some of these substances are captured in this flavor wheel. This is by, by no means comprehensive. But here we can see some of the compounds that will be produced and again, uh, when we talk about bakery and croissant, maybe, uh, we probably talk about caramel taste or maybe nutty. The second thing we're going to look at is speeding up the reaction, where we're going to now focus on collision theory and particle theory. How can we speed up a reaction? Well, we can increase the heat. Increasing the temperature will mean that there's more energy for the reactants, in this case, glucose and amino acids, to um, have more kinetic energy and then react um, more vigorously. We can also increase the concentration. So during the mild reaction, we have obviously glucose and amino acids working together, the sugar and the protein. If we increase that concentration, we will have also a quicker reaction. And we can also increase the pH. In the, this case, it's very, uh, important to know the reaction mechanism. We're going to come to that in just a minute. Uh, but if you increase the pH, in this case, we would use sodium bicarbonate. Um, with a higher pH, you have the amino acids being deprotonated. What that means, we're going to look at in just a second. So let's focus first on increasing heat and increasing concentration. Again, like we said, particle and collision theory is key now here. So just to uh, to remind ourselves of the reaction, we have the glucose, which is represented in the gray particle. We have the amino acid represented as a black particle. And then the aroma substances, and there could be many different ones, they're um, represented by the brown particle. Okay, temperature. Again, we said already with a higher temperature, uh, there's more kinetic energy, sugar and protein molecules are quicker. And with quicker movement, you have obviously resulting in more collisions. So at low heat, you have, they have little energy. And even if they would collide, there might not be a successful collision because they don't have enough energy. And so the, the, the kinetic energy is represented by the, by the shorter arrow now. So there's, very, there's a low kinetic energy present. And we have some aroma substances being produced. Now, if we increase the heat and we increase the temperature, you now the kinetic energy increases, represented by the larger arrow. We have them um, move about much quicker with more energy, more successful collision, and hence we have more aroma substances being produced. So how would that look in a kitchen? Let's check it out. Um, with the mild reaction, it's the browning reaction that we see in, in baking all the time. Um, and let's look at some real life examples on how, how we can speed up a reaction. So first off, we have change in temp temperature. We are going to look at pancakes that are um, baked at constant mass 
of sugar and egg, and we fry them at different temperatures. Let's do it. The next one up is concentration. And now, if you look at concentration, the higher the concentration is, meaning we have more sugar and more protein in our bakery, um, the more particles that are actually reacting are present, and that means we would have more collision. Now, in low concentration, we will have some particles that are there and producing some, you know, a certain amount of aroma substances. Now, if we increase that concentration, it doesn't matter if we double it or if we triple it, we just have more of those reactant particles, more reactants present, and therefore we are also going to produce far more aroma substances because we have far more successful collisions. Again, how would that look like in a kitchen? Let's check it out. Okay, the second thing we're looking at is change in concentration. Um, now, we're using apple rings in this case, and they are coated with different mass of sugar, and we fry them at, at a constant temperature. Okay, let's do it. The next thing we're going to look at is um, the reaction of amino acids and baking soda. Remember, this is all about the pH now. So we're going to have the amino acids being deprotonated, which makes it a better nucleophile, which reacts more readily with glucose. And so let's let's look at the amino acid. Here we have the the nitrogen, which is attached to not only one but two hydrogens. Um, but let's look at that, that one hydrogen here in particular. Um, and then sodium bicarbonate, we have that oxygen, which has a negative charge. So it has, um, it has a lot of electrons um, around it, and, and, and therefore uh, it wants to have uh, a nucleophile, which is positive. So um, it, it would love to attack and, and take more positive um, charge. And so it has a lone pair to give, and that lone pair is attacking that hydrogen. Now, it takes that hydrogen, and then that means that the amino acid is amino acid anion. It lost the hydrogen, it has a negative charge. Now, that amino acid anion is just now going to make this reaction much quicker because this is much more reactive. Again, because it is now a better nucleophile, nucleophile wanting to have, uh, being attracted uh, to your positive charge. Again, let's check it out. The last kitchen experiment that we're doing is the change in pH. Um, here we use pastry. Uh, with different amounts of tablespoons of baking soda in water to form a solution. We brush it off on top and we bake it at constant temperature. Okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. 